Hey there, you're listening to the Pursue Your Spark podcast. My name is Heike Yates, and on this show, we talk about how to unlock your potential in your fitness lifestyle with tips, strategies, and interviews to help you create the life you love. Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of the Pursue Your Spark podcast. I'm your host, Heike Yates, and we have a special episode today. It is Thanksgiving today. And in episode number 32, we're talking about five quick and guilt-free holiday survival tips. I love Thanksgiving. I'm originally from Germany, and we don't have Thanksgiving. And when I moved here from Germany to the United States about 30 years ago, I had my first Thanksgiving meal with my German friends who invited me. I had no other friends at this point, so they're like, you're single, you're solo, come on over, because that's what you do. You invite people that have nowhere go to go on Thanksgiving. I was blown away by the food that was prepared. The amazing scrumptious turkey with gravy, the sweet potato casseroles, the green beans, the pies, apple pie, pecan pie, pumpkin pie. There was so much food. I always said you could have fed an army with all that food. And I loved every bite of it. Uh, So I decided that I start this holiday season off with a bang and show you how you can eat your favorite holiday treats without guilt and gaining weight. You know, there is a better way to avoid the holiday weight gain, sugar crushes, and the food hangovers. So let's dive into my five quick and guilt-free holiday survival tips. It starts out with temptation. Number one is control temptations. We all have trigger foods that make us want to eat more of what we love, like the pie and ice cream. I just love uh, apple pie and I love the ice cream, but actually I love whipped cream. That's that's really my, my oh my God, I, I always say I could dive into whipped cream. So if you give me a piece of pie with whipped cream, I literally can't stop eating pie and whipped cream. And I feel so sick afterwards. So here's my, if you have one of those trigger foods, think about which ones they are. Like I said, mine is apple pie and whipped cream. And so what I do is I have a tiny little piece of the pie and a little bit of the ice cream, but I make sure that we always bring some fruit. So I have a load of fruit right next to my bits and pieces of pie. It takes me a little longer to chew up the fruit. I have different flavors and they satisfy my pie cravings. Uh, Also plan for parties. And you've heard this before. Eat a light snack like a yogurt before you attend a party. So you don't go there all starving, hoping that you will find the amazing foods that you love and start stuffing yourself with things you would never eat. So plan for parties. Eat a light snack like a yogurt or another protein source that starts filling you up a little bit. Then temptation number three is starchy breakfasts. I, again, I love pancakes. And pancakes usually come with a ton of butter, syrup, juice, and coffee. So when you're invited over or you're staying at somebody's house and they're whooping up that pancake or the French toast, stop yourself and see if you can get an egg white omelet, a piece of fruit, or a fruit salad. Maybe there's still some fruit salad left over. And a piece of whole wheat toast. And if they don't have it, grab just one of the pancakes. All right, I'll give you that because we're not on a diet. We're being real here. We're real people eating real foods. But instead of, of instead of eating the pancake six or 12 stack, maybe an egg white omelet with some fruit, fruit salad, and a piece of whole wheat toast will st- a stop those temptations. Number two, smart choices. Smart choices as far as what you choose when it comes to your meals. 
Choose oil-based dressings instead of creamy dressings. Think of your dressing that oftentimes I see these delicious salads that have all this goodness in them being doused in this creamy, orangey, or whitey dressings that are just packing on the fat and the calories, and you don't really need them. Drizzle some uh, olive oil, some lemon, a little vinegar, balsamic vinegar. It is so tasty, and you actually can taste the salads. Same goes for if you're making a potato salad. It doesn't have to be loaded with a lot of mayo, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of, um, again, vinegar goes a long way. Second, choose grilled fish or chicken over other options. Now, today we're eating turkey, so go for the turkey. Because if you have the turkey with a little bit of everything on the side, you're good to go. But I'm thinking more of what came to mind when I prepared that podcast was a cordon bleu. A cordon bleu is a piece of meat, chicken or pork, that you cut in half, but it's still attached, so it looks like a butterfly. And you fill it with ham and cheese, and then you bread it and fry it. So this is definitely not something I want you to pick. So scratch things that are fried, that are battered, that are filled with unknown things. And that goes for seafood too. Number three, choose mixed berries instead of a slice of cake or mix it up. You know, berries go a long way. If you want to, if your health is really important and you don't want to gain weight, you don't miss on the slice. You don't miss out the piece of cake. Because as I said in number one, watch what your triggers are and be aware that you're, that you're not eating what triggers, in this case, a sweet tooth. You may have a salty tooth. And so it's the same goes if you're a chips eater. Let's make a smart choice. Don't eat the chips. Go for the fruit. Go for a pretzel if you're savory. Um, so these are great solutions for you to check out and hone in on this. And before you dive in to eat, just look at it. Number three, cutting calories at home. When I grew up, my family served our meals family style. Put the pots in the middle and everybody just dug in and started eating. So having these pots sitting in front of you does not help with portion control, especially when it's something you absolutely love. You keep digging in and keep eating and don't even listen to your hunger cues anymore because you're just going for it. So how about that instead? Serve individual plates in the kitchen. Arrange the food beautifully on the plate without the food actually hanging over the plate, but it looks appetizing. First off, you see something beautiful that you love to eat and you have normal amounts, not a ton on your plate. That will cut down on your cravings and you may already be full after one of those servings. So no seconds. Maybe another tip would work for you that uh, you use small salad plates instead of those regular big plates. That again cuts down on your serving size. And if you just have a little tablespoonful of all the things you eat, that may be just enough for you for a meal without you feeling stuffed, or, or just have a, a, a food hangover, as I said earlier, because you just keep piling on the food. Now, number three out of the cutting calories at home category is take only one helping of all the food groups except for the vegetables. If the vegetables that are on your in your kitchen are not doused with cheese or gravies or any other things, go for it. If they have stuff, what I call stuff on them, skip around it and eat your vegetables in its most natural state without crap on it. They taste so delicious and you can have more than one serving of those. So that was number three. Let's move on to how to survive the buffet. I'm not sure if you say buffet or buffet here in the States, but I call it the buffet. Okay, here is a biggie over the holidays. And Thanksgiving, you may go out to a restaurant that has a Thanksgiving buffet. 
here's what I'd like you to do. Circle the buffet several times before you choose your foods. No, don't just go and get in line with your plate and off you go. Look what's there. Look at the foods that you like. And then only eat the foods you love. Only eat the foods that you know are good for you and not the mysterious wobbly gelatin that's kind of sitting there because everybody else is taking it. So circle the buffet and only eat the foods that you love. Number three, skip foods that are doused in gravy already or sauces that are just, I don't know how to describe it. They're just like like a lava coming over the food and all you see is gravy. And I love gravy, but all within reason. So skip foods that have lots of sauce on them and lots of stuff you don't want to eat because you sure don't know what they're made of. And lastly, commit to eating only one plate. That's why you circle. That's why you pick the foods you love. You skip the crap sauce foods and that makes sure that you only eat one plate because you will have the things you love. You enjoy them because you eat them slowly. You enjoy them. And you're not already eyeing the buffet to see if the line got shorter and you can just dive in for another round of it. So be aware, buffets have a lot of hidden calories. Let's move on to number five. My favorite, of course. Get moving. The holidays are not about sitting on our buttskis doing nothing but eat and drink and repeat all over and watch some sports games. Help clean up with the dishes. So get out there, help with the dishes, you move back and forth, um, help put things away in little containers and um, that's a good start for you to get start moving. The other idea I always love is after you eat, go for a walk. Because everybody feels stuffed because they ate foods they normally don't eat. Everybody eats just a little bit more of what we don't normally don't eat and how much we don't eat. So we're all a little, you know, want to move. And it's great. Just bundle up if you're in cold climates and take a walk with the family. Now, another fun thing, if you have kids are playing active indoor games. No, I'm not talking soccer because that could break the China. <laughs> but these games that where you um, hop on little round um, circles like a hopscotch. Think of it as like a hopscotch. You know what I mean if you have kids. So it's not sitting in front of the computer and playing games. Don't move. But get everybody involved. Um like we used to play pick up sticks. So we played a round of pick up sticks and then nobody could sit on the floor anymore. So we started moving around and started walking around in the kitchen, um, seeing what everybody else was doing. And then we started uh, like a hopscotch kind of game where we set up little squares and we played a song. And when the song was turned off, you were done and you had to hold the position you were in at that moment. Kind of fun because everybody needed some balance. So interactive indoor games. And number three about the get moving part or throughout the holidays is don't stop exercising because you are away. It doesn't mean you have to go hardcore, go to the gym, hit the Pilates class, but don't stop moving. There's so many things we can do. We can go hiking, walking, um, Turn on the music and dance. That's always, of course, my favorite. Um, when you're indoors and it's cold outside, don't stop moving. It's not looking for the holidays to give you permission to take a break from exercise. It is keep doing what you love to do and just do a little bit more. So I love to go running and with my run walks, I just love being outside and moving and sharing stories. Um, this weekend, actually tomorrow, we are leaving to go to San Francisco and visit my son and his wife. It is our turn to visit for Thanksgiving. Last year they came here and when they were here last year, we always run the, um, local YMCA turkey trot. And we have so much fun because we 
everything's basically sort of kind of ready. Um, the bird cooks itself, as I always say, and we're out racing. We're meeting friends that are also out exercising. And so this year we're not going to do that. So when we're in San Francisco, the, my son lives right downtown. So there's so much fun to see and we can walk around and check out the city hall and the surroundings. So we're definitely going to be out there moving. So there you have my five quick and guilt-free holiday survival tips. You know what the best part about these tips are? You can eat and move like this any time of the year. That's a big secret here. It's not just life stops because it's the holidays. We eat till we fall over. We don't exercise so the pants will explode. No, you can eat and live like this every day. So January doesn't have to be another quick fix diet. So exercise is part of the, of the equation. And you know I love to exercise. So continue to work out, strength train. Uh, you can always rock out a couple of push-ups during the holidays. Not only does this, does this whole approach keep your weight in check, but it also lowers your stress. We don't need more stress. We have enough stress in our lives. This is the time where we just chill out, eat sensibly, exercise, hang out with the people we love. And that's what I'm going to do. So here's, I have a request. Are you subscribed to my podcast? If you're not, then I want to encourage you to do that right now. I don't want you to miss out on another episode. Click the link in the show notes and subscribe in iTunes. And you know what? While you're there, I would love it if you left me a review over on iTunes. These reviews help other people find my podcast, and I love reading them. Just again, click the review button on iTunes, select ratings and reviews, and write a review. And let me know what your favorite part of the podcast is. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, safe, and healthy Thanksgiving. So until next time, ciao.